welcome to still life pots and flowers or flowers and jokes or whatever I've called it. What we're going to be doing is making something a bit like this one. This is the only one of these I've actually got left. I've kept this one, the daisies, but all the others have gone. These are really popular um, pieces of work. They just have quite a universal appeal. Um, and so we're going to look at making something like this and we can either mount into a frame like this or onto a canvas. So I'll show you those in a minute because what I'm going to do in this just an intro video is just go through the sort of things you're going to need, which I'm pretty sure most of you are going to have. Um, let's get these bits off the table first. Are you going to need some sort of um, substrate? Um, to create on. Um, it could be wadding uh, if you like using that. I'm using a wool viscose felt. Um, this is very stable um, and allows a little bit of give in the fabric which allows me to block it if I need to. So I really like using this because I like my pieces to have a little bit of dimension but to basically be quite flat. Um, you're also going to need um, heat and bond or bond web. Um, Whichever is your preference, I prefer heat and bond. This is heat and bond light, L-I-T-E. Um, and I guess, and I am guessing a bit, you're gonna need about a meter of that. We're going to basically stick down all our elements with heat and bond. Um, and you're also going to need some tracing paper um, for when we come to, all mine as kind of industrial size things from Teach. You don't need a roll of tracing paper like this. You could have just a packet. Um, but some paper, because we're going to, that's going to help us to plan our stitching when we come to that. Um, in line with that, you're going to need a couple of black pens to do that with. Always need a pencil, some scissors, fabric scissors, and a rotary cutter. You're going to need um, a, a, a quilter's ruler. I mean, this is a big one. This is 24 by 6, which is going to be ideal for this. But you just need some sort of ruler. You know, I've managed on workshops with much smaller than that, um, usually because I've forgotten the big one. Um, you're going to need a cutting mat. This, this glorious thing is the third of one of my cutting mats. Um, oh, hang on, that has to be collected because the boys will have that in a nanosecond. Pink up thread. Oh yeah, our, our favourite snitch. We'll have that straight back. Um, so this was a big A1 cutting mat that folded um, and it was really good until a bit fell off. But actually this is a really useful size cutting mat because it's long and thin. It fits on my desk. I was going to say without knocking everything off. It did just knock stuff off. But there we go. So we need a cutting mat and a ruler. You're going to need some threads of some sort. Um, I've got machine threads here because I usually work by machine. My preference is for my favourite thread is still King Tut. I still think that's marginally the strongest thread going. So this is King Tut and it's a mercerised cotton. Um, oh, and I've also got um, Aurifil threads which have a better colour range. So it's kind of six and two, three with these two. Um, and these are also very nice, strong cotton threads. Both are 40 weight threads. Um, basically, the higher the number on a thread, the thinner the thread. So a 40 weight thread is a real nice uh, middle of the road guy that you could use for stitching fabrics together, dress making, quilt making, and you can also use for embroidering um, and quilting over the top. So it's a nice weight thread. So I've got 40 weight threads. Um, if you wanted to hand stitch, I mean, really, that's completely up to you. Whatever your favourite threads are, I've just got some lovely um, stranded cottons here from um, Lynn Layden, who sells these at shows. Um, and these are just bundles of different colours. Um, or you could use pearl cotton um, if you like using that. Um, and there's some beautiful threads by people like Steph Francis makes fantastic threads. Um, so have a look around. And if you're a hand embroiderer, you will have your own favourites already. Um, you will need templates. In fact, you'll just need the PDF. Um, you have a PDF in the group. Um, shout if you can't find it. It should be there under files um, and that's available for you to download and you can print it off if you want. If you want. And in that, 
there's full instructions for making this thing and there's also a set of templates for you of different flowers and different pots for you to choose from and use obviously if you would can't seem to find anything but pots there and grasses there there's some tulips where's my yekis where's my yekis there that's daisies some daisies some echinaceas um so you'll find a nice set of um flowers and pots for you to choose from in there and then you need fabric i'm going to make this one all out of fabric um, I often would use a combination of fabric and papers, but I'm going to use just fabric for this one to keep it nice and simple. Because um, I've said this was accessible for um, anybody, really, from beginners to the very experienced. So if you're experienced and you've done other workshops with me, you already know you can add paper into this mix. So I've got, well, like most of us, I've got quite a healthy stash of fabric. And I have just picked up some that I think might work for this. Um, I've got a mixture of... Um, a lot of these are recycled fabrics, you know, so this is shirts and sheeting um, that I found in charity shops um, and collect and cut elements out of. Um, I've got, that's just a piece of heavy linen that's come out of a Parkitex um, sample book. I've also got my fair old share of quilting. I'm not even sure that is a quilting fabric. It's certainly a cotton. It feels like... Um, it feels like a bit like a cotton chintz um you know bits with patterns on i've got some plainish well i mean i've just got the, the usual sort of stash what i've tried to pick up um ooh, that's gorgeous isn't it that's actually not quilting cotton at all that's a sample from um um emma bridgewater um fabric sample book gorgeous um are just things that i think look interesting you know so i've got some small patterns and gentle patterning on them i've got some much brighter patterns and some with white in i've got some that almost read as all over color uh, that's another one that reads as all over color really i've got some nice things like some bits of liberty lawn in here um, that's my old curtains from a house in the well, 90s you know i've got all sorts of stuff here collected over the years it's a bit of a mishmash really um, but these days i very rarely use commercial fabrics so i've got two drawers really of commercial fabrics and this this is what's in them they're sort of bits i've pulled pulled out that's a nice one that i bought um oh, several years ago um, at one of the shows uh, which I don't know, it just has a homely look to it, doesn't it? Which I thought might might go quite nicely with pots and flowers. At this stage of the game, I don't really know what I'm going to use. So I didn't want you to think that I'm going to get out a small pile because I'm not. I'm just going to get out a good one. I absolutely love, <sighs> goes with my dress, absolutely just love that colour. And I mean, I'm loving that with that. That looks beautiful together, doesn't it? Um, and then I've got some linens and these are, again, these are ones that I've had over the years for, this is our old kitchen curtains, um, which had to come down because the dogs were just trashing this colour. Um, but I really liked the fabric, so I made Stephen keep it. That would be a really nice one to use. It's very gentle, it's very pale. Anything I put on that is going to kick up nicely, even paler. Um, this one, um, I don't think did i make cushions out of this it's hard to believe i would have done i think i've used this for the language of flowers because of the pale background but another lovely linen fabric um this one is i believe um i think this is lenny bergere um if you're a fabricaholic you'll know that name um which i bought thinking i would do some upholstering with it but i haven't done so it's still here and this is a really gorgeous large piece of linen um, and i can mix up my fabrics because i'm because i'm bonding everything down but i don't have to have all quilting cottons and another nice piece of linen this i used to cover a blanket box um in our in our old house you know so that's quite pale but with some really interesting big lines on it i've got more this is draw two coming across now um no particular order to these and it's, it's more of the same oh i saw that that was actually in a drawer of bits of um vintage linen which i have for using um to make that language of flowers but i just saw that and thought oh i wonder if i can use that somehow because you know it has a very tablecloth-y look to it doesn't it so i just, just thought can i use that somewhere this is <laughs> this is kath kidson i loved kath kidson 
devastated she's fallen and Laura Ashley I was just that girl just my era I like this this is a white one with just measurements on which I think oh, could be fun to use it's just nice to have a variety to make an interesting composition you want some contrasting values so some very lights and some very darks and you want a variety of patterns you can tell I like spots and dots because I've got a lot of polka dotted ones oh that's a very thin bit of cotton lawn blue but you know that may come into the equation more Kath Kidson, more Lenny Bergere, isn't that beautiful? Absolutely gorgeous linen. Wow, that's bright. I mean, that's a bit hopeful, thinking I might use that, because that would take a lot of work to make anything show up on that, but it is rather gorgeous, so I might use some areas from it. It's more of a journal page, really, than, um, than a fabric for creating. That's really thick. I used this to back some to put onto canvases which I then mounted shells on um, I painted it um, but I just loved the texture and I felt it looked quite seaweedy but I've got a bit of that a bit of black and white that can be nice I'm sort of an oriental I think that's low rossi fabric that definitely is oh this is from the bramble patch about six seven years ago um is this moda yeah this is moda um just lovely lovely bits of fabric these are all ones i can't bear to throw away so when i do a project like this out they come you see you can see that's that in a different in a different colorway isn't it you know that could be a nice combination to use for my background more pale ones i've got a good collection of black whites and neutrals because they're always useful a bit more sheet or am i back on the same pile no that's a bigger bit of sheet that's a bit of completely no it's not completely plain i don't know what that is it's like um a satin a sateen um, with just a very small um, print on it that's pretty that one John Lewis um, daisies for John Lewis um, just a nice piece of probably a cotton linen mix more Lonnie Rossi um, some quite dramatic fabric there so it's nice isn't it just to have a nice stash to play with that's gorgeous you know I love I love the juxtaposition to use a posh word of you know something like that which is checked with that and that and say this one underneath you know i think particularly those two together and that's take that out but those three i think that's a beautiful combination of facts making me miss making quilts except that i just couldn't be bothered but you know it is because it's, it's the joy of fabric isn't it love this one gorgeous piece of fabric not sure who that is could be Lonnie rossi I mean, that looks a bit case fossil to me, but I don't recall. I don't recall who it is, and it hasn't got salvage on, so I'm not going to be able to find out. More planes, a bit of silk, which might come in to bang something up. Some beautiful old florals from the, from the 80s by the looks of these. Um, this looks like Sanderson to me. Ah, oh, it's like living through my past, this. Um, oh, that's gorgeous, isn't it? Not lovely. That's been something, that's an old curtain, part of an old curtain, not a curtain I made, I bought the fabric um, second, <laughs> second hand, I bought the fabric second hand um, to make more things out of, I think I bought that and the one before in a charity shop in, in Barnard Castle, um, possibly not in Barnard Castle, but somewhere up there, Newcastle perhaps, when we were up in the north, oh that's beautiful, it's a lovely piece of fabric, look, and there's another piece that goes with that really nicely, so they just go on really more linens i brought some of these out because i i'm thinking echinaceous and i knew i needed some deep colors some reds and oranges for those and i don't have a lot of those in commercial fabrics so i've pulled pulled some out a bit of shirt and this color as well um, because i could make that work and i've pulled out blues because i like them that could maybe work as an orangey color and so on and so forth more lenny oh oh i say Look at these. Oh, crikey. I'll tell you what this is. Gosh, this is ancient. Um, when I first started patchwork and quilting, as we all do, I decided to make um, a double bed quilt. And these are parts of the elements of it. So this was a sash in it, um, which was these were curtains in my house. Um, and oh, beautifully made, Hilary, beautifully made. Obviously, this must have been a spare bit. I must have made too much. Um, so I've got a spare bit of that and I see that could be lovely to use just for the memory just for the memory and it's taking me straight back to Stephen and I's first house together and I made the quilt 
while we were flooded out of the house. I just needed something to do because what I did creatively then was renovated houses so and gardens. Um, I got nothing to do, so I got a book on quilting and took up quilting. Um, and this is also from the same thing. These were the squares. Very simple patch, um, an eight star, eight point star. Um, these were the squares that I had in the quilt. Um, I think I've thrown the quilt away long ago, but it's nice to have these and maybe I could incorporate those. Those would be nice things to incorporate into it. That's a lovely piece of fabric. And that is more curtains from the same house, a later, a later, a later, a later edition in a gorgeous chintz. And just more, more, more. So I've got a lovely big stash of fabric to pull from and to choose from. And when we come to the session where I'm going to make my background, I'll tell you how I'm going to choose it. Um, but I would always start with a reasonably big pile of stuff to begin with, to give myself lots of options. Um, I feel I just like having, I like having options. Right, so that's my commercial fabrics. And then I've also picked up just some um, of my own done fabrics. Now, I haven't picked up my best ones here because those often suggest that I want to use them in bigger elements. Um, but these are all ones. They're sort of also rans or, I mean, in the case of this one, I think I was just using up some paint. I haven't even washed this. Um, I was just using up some paint I had, but I just think that's gorgeous. I absolutely love that background and that might work somewhere. You know, it might pull in with something I've got. The colours I'm vaguely thinking of are blues and oranges um, because of the colour of the echinaceas. And I sort of feel I would like some blue in the background. So these are more just, I can't even remember how I've done this. This looks to me like some... Uh, that looks like a glue screen. So I, I think it's a glue screen because I don't think it's soy wax. It could be soy wax. Anyway, it's screen printing. So I've got a lovely piece with lots of different colors on there. Um, but I'm looking particularly at these pinky oranges and thinking, oh, they could be good for flowers. Um, and it can be really exciting to mix in, um, excuse me, I've got something in my eye, mix in some of your own made materials with the commercials. You know, it can make a really quite exciting juxtaposition word again um this was um this is some breakdown printing which went horribly wrong at that point because i completely somehow missed the print i've washed it out completely um but i've got a couple of nices here and again i've got these really bright red orange colors which i think could look fantastic for my flowers and a, and a piece like that could be really useful if i want to bring some lightness in behind my flowers to make them pop up more breakdown cloth a lot of this is breakdown cloth because you get these lovely um generic cloths and these aren't breakdowns where i've looked at them and thought wow they're so good i'm going to use them for something in particular that's just a beautiful piece of material which i think could work really nicely for something like this and ditto this one that one's um one done with um soy wax batik um not a particularly great paint oh, it's got egg cups on it it was never meant to have egg cups let's turn it that way now it's got flat-faced fish on it. Okay, um, but a piece of batik, it's just, I've picked that for its colour. More breakdown, lovely breakdown on here. Some really pretty ones. Oh, in fact, that's absolutely gorgeous, isn't it? I now just think, why don't I just sew that all together as a gorgeous tablecloth or something? But I pulled it out and it's got some yellow in, which is, oh! <laughs> I hadn't realised I'd actually pulled out one with a pot on. There's bonus, there's a bonus. I think it's a bit big, sadly for what I'm doing, but I'll have to do a bigger piece at some point and get those stuck in. Those are in fact, um, break the breakdown prints. I think there's one or two of you watching who are doing the breakdown course or who have done it. These were breakdown prints done with water soluble media. Um, or were they, or are they done with, no, I think they are. And then, they weren't very good when they came out. They just about disappeared, but I've worked back into these with crayons afterwards, which will be coming too soon in the breakdown course. More, um, that's soy wax material, just some nice gentle colors here. More soy wax, more soy wax. Um, just some nice gentle pieces that might come in. That one, I strongly suspect it was never meant to be that color. I think I've forgotten to put the um, soda ash in that cloth. Um, because it's just about washed out. You'll never get, Prosium Dine will never come straight out. 
but I wouldn't have dyed this in this colour. I suspect I dyed this. I can see it's succession. I think I've been yellow, orange, and then red, and that's what's come out after I've forgotten to back. I've forgotten to um, get soda ash in it properly. I love hoops and donuts. So I can imagine these, and these are sort of fun things. Um, you know, they'd be great. I can just see that sitting behind, you know, a jug, that, some big daisies. Yum, yum, yum. Um, so I love looking through them and having a look what I've got. This is a long introduction, isn't it? But there you go, that's me. And we'll do this all over again when I'm choosing them. Um, another piece of um, soy wax cloth, which really I've, over, I've overdone it. Um, I haven't left much pattern left in that, but I've got some really nice deep shades in there if I needed them. Another one where it looks like I've, I've washed it out just about. There's not much left. Actually, that's bonus because that's already got a heat and bond on the back. So we'll definitely have to have that in because that's all ready to go. And another one. More breakdown cloth. This was breakdown using um, a stencil in a sort of grid. But I can see all of these working well. So I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to use mostly my own made or mostly commercials or a 50-50 mix or what I'm going to do. I'm just picking up materials that I like the look of. See, that's gorgeous. That's lovely blues, lovely greens. Oh, another one with, um, this is, this is a screen resist here. This is Jacquard screen resist, a very damned printed with paint. Very, very gentle, but nice. I um, can see that working. That's actually a beautiful leaf print, but I've only got one of it. Um, so I would use that in something more, more very gentle. These were done with um, mermaid's purses, which I've managed to get the right name for for once. These are really vibrant cloths. Um, but that may be, maybe I'll go down that route. I don't know yet, I really don't know. So I've pulled out, as I say, a variety. This was screen, this is screen printing um, with leaves. And that is screen printing with leaves with some stamping over the top of it. So they're lovely. Um, more screen printing. Um, I think that's using masking tape, but I've got a nice sort of checkerboardy fabric if I want that kind of feel in there somewhere. These have all been washed. Not that this piece is ever going to be washed, but these have all been washed. I've got into the habit now, apart from the first one, of washing all my fabric. This one, um, a spectacular duff up. Um, lovely pale rubber eggs blue on here, but this had beautiful charcoal um, release on it from releasing a charcoal screen. And um, one of the students in the breakdown course at the moment um, was just saying she'd forgotten to put her textile medium on and wasn't it annoying well I tell you what you got a lot more out of yours than I did I just watched this absolutely beautiful pattern in it was in oranges and bronzes and greys it was beautiful on here and it just washed out completely and I am just left with those but still a useful piece of cloth you know I just had to get over myself um, one where I appear to, I'm not quite sure what's happened there. There's a lot of blurring, isn't there? But it's still a nice piece of cloth. Um, I, don't, I don't know what this is. How have I done this? Let's play how have we done this one. Um, no, nope, still no idea. I can see that this is paint. It could be, could be a screen. I think it's done with masking tape ripped up on a screen. I think that's what it is. But it's a very nice bright cloth. That one's bright, isn't it? Can't argue with that one on the vibrancy scale. Um, I thought, <laughs> should I want to do a really bright pink Echinaceas? That's the boy. That will certainly do them. And there's a cloth in oranges and reds. Now you see that could make some really nice Echinacea flowers. Um, that's what I've decided I'm going to do for this one because I've done all the other flowers. Not that I don't mind doing them again, um, but I thought I'd do Echinaceas because I haven't done. So those are some really nice colors. As are those in a more sort of gentle palette, but still in those reds and oranges. And then um, I've got some bits with Rosa on, which is a bit, you know, okay, it's a bit quirky when it's second like nature's, but it's beautiful colours, isn't it? The colours on there, that's just such a lovely piece of fabric. Really nice. A yellow one, which is rare, so that's probably why I've picked it up. I think I just picked up this heap. Um, these are stencils. This is stenciling with some of um, my own stencils. That's stenciling with a commercial stencil. It's got some really vibrant pattern. I love this bit particularly. Where there's that really, I think it's 
poppy red and then these gosh these are old these are really old bits um, of just they're quite possibly sample cloths I and they could quite easily be where I've been demonstrating stuff I mean this as far as I can see here I have just put on paint and on onto this area and just splattered it that's a small um, stencil up there that's a blot off of a stencil down there. I don't know why I was using a piece of cloth for this because it actually feels really nice cloth. That's a thermofax screen up there and there's another stencil. But what I have got on here is some fabulous colour. Whichever side I use it, there's some really beautiful colours on there. So I picked that one up for a really vibrant one. I will never use all my fabrics. I did mean to make up packs for this, um, which would have been a fabulous idea. Um, but I didn't get it done and actually nobody um, had asked me. So that's, that's why I didn't get treated. Um, but if anybody does want any, I can, as you can see, I've got plenty of stuff. I can easily put some packs together. That's a small bit of um, another piece I've got over there, which I've kept because I just loved the paint combination on there. There's a lovely red piece that I could use for Echinacea. And just because that's got blue on, I mean, I think the blue's gorgeous, but if I don't want, oh, well, actually, the blue's come straight through on the other side, but I could use the back if I want it more gentle. And some more, and some, I looked for a really pale piece and that jumped out at me, that's just stenciled. Um, so it's got pattern in, um, but it's a nice light one. Little birdies singing their socks off, another gentle blue one. And some paisleys and some trees and you know everything bar the kitchen sink really pomegranates but again a really bright vibrant cloth which i think i could take advantage of pale green and well, these were ones that i used um for making some echo nature pieces for maggie gray's wow book the first one that again i thought could be gorgeous colors for echo nature so there's that pinky almost orange going on on here and on here they're very appealing that's an interesting piece to have picked up that's um well it's strips of block printing that i've rather killed with the dye haven't i but i've got some um i've got some really nice colors again running through that so i can see that being useful more blue more this is more screen printing with masks a sort of one that looks a bit like a jigsaw puzzle some blues greens and reds and greens some and oh, they're nice some hibiscus flowers more stenciling so all this fabric that i make some of you will recognize these pieces some of these are definitely ones i mean i've done a, did a video for this i, I did a, a stream for this um oh three four years ago um for making this and using these stencils i remember doing it and how excited i was so you, you know a lot of this stuff um, you've seen being made and you wonder what I'm going to do with it. Well, this is what, hey, these are those pots before I'd worked back into them. So, so can you see the pot in there? I'll hold it for a while for you. I can. The two, the light yellow and the light blue are the top. Let me get it so that it, there's only it on there. And there's another one over here. And those are similar to the ones that I've worked back into and got pots of. So that is... Is what you need you do not need this amount i brought you a huge variety to look at there but quite honestly it'd be quite possible with me that i would start excuse me things falling off that i would start with that kind of volume of fabric because it's going to give me loads of choices but get yourself a nice pile and i would suggest that you watch through um certainly the first two or three videos first so that you know what you're doing um, and then you can start thinking about your fabrics. Obviously, I know what I'm doing, so I can think ahead. But I would just wait to save yourself some energy until we get onto the making part. Um, and then you will have a much better idea. So I'm going to put all this away and I will be back for session one, where we are going to look at um, choices that we've got for templates um, and how to prepare them. Um, and get ready for our um, so that we've chosen our pot and templates that we're going to be working with so i will see you soon bye for now bye